Hello everyone and welcome. You have reached example 3 from topic 5. You've reached this video because either it was linked for you in the course notes you downloaded from Brightspace, or it was linked for you in the description of the main lecture for topic 5. Without further ado, let's get right to this. Okay. So what are we doing in general terms, just as a reminder? Well, we're looking to find out how to use this series of 63 articles from Volume 1, Division B, Part 3. They go from Articles 3.2.220 to 3.2.283. And what these articles contain are a set of uh, safety requirements for protecting structure against fire. And the way that this is done is by identifying five building characteristics and how they allow you to zoom into one of these 63 articles. And the way we do that is by going backwards. Okay, without further ado, let's get to the example itself and let's learn by doing. So here's the example in question. Example number three. You're being asked to classify this building. Okay, so find out what its occupancy is. Then determine the requirements for combustibility of the material, whether it's combustible or non-combustible. Finally, to find out the fire resistance rating for the floor and the non-combustible mezzanine. The building in question that's shown for you on the screen is unsprinklered, two stories, a department store. It faces two streets and has a building area of 850 square meters. So let me rearrange the important information so that I can use the rest of the screen to solve this question. So we're going to use again the same five building characteristics previously identified and we're going to pluck out the information from this example to see how it applies. What is the major occupancy? Because it's a department store, our knowledge from topic two tells us it's an E occupancy. Remember, Appendix A is your friend. Okay, the next one is building area. What do we get? 850 square meters. Information about building area can be found in Topic 3. What about building height? As we learned in Topic 3, that's the number of stories. In this case, two stories. How many streets is this facing? Based on this specific question, this building in question, two streets. And is this building sprinklered or unsprinklered? In our case, we're being told it's unsprinklered. That means there are no sprinklers in this building. Okay, now that we have this information, I'm gonna summarize the five building characteristics and move them to the top right portion of our corner. Oh, sorry, I lied about that. Sorry, we're gonna do that shortly. But first, we have to identify which articles of the 63 at our disposals these actually apply to, right? Because don't forget, we have anywhere from either Article 3.2.220 to Article 3.2.283. So that's a lot of articles. Where do we start? That's where our occupancy comes into play. Because it's an E occupancy, only a small subsection of these 63 articles is related to E occupancy as you'll find either by looking at the index or the table of contents or by flipping through these 63 articles. The articles for E occupancy are 3.2.257 all the way to 3.2.262. But which one of these are we going to use? Well, if you remember by now, based on example number one and example number two, we figure that out by going backwards, starting at the end and moving backwards. So now, let me summarize the five building characteristics and move them to the top right corner of the screen. And let's start moving backwards, okay? All right, so we're gonna start with the last of these five articles. That's article 3.2.262. This article, as you know by reading the whole thing, including its title, applies to a maximum of two-story buildings that are sprinklered. Does that apply to us? It could, 
Uh, it says max two stories, and our building has two stories. But our building is unsprinklered, and this article is only for sprinklered buildings. No good. We get rid of this one and keep on moving backwards. Okay. So then we look at the requirements for Article 3.2.261, which is maximum two stories. So this might be right. It has the potential of being right. So now we have to read everything under this article to see if its contents are applicable. So we start with the first clause, which is clause 3.2.261.1a. You read the contents of that clause, and that clause is applicable because it sends you to the next clause, right? That is clause 3.2.261.1b. So when you read that clause, it directs you to the requirements in table 3.2.261, which contains a table that has requirements related to buildings, the number of stories, the area, and how many streets it's facing. And when you look at that table, you'll find that our building at 850 square meters, two stories, and facing two streets does not apply does not fall within the requirements of this table. As such, this article does not apply. We scratch it and we move backwards even more. Okay, so the next article backwards is 3.2.260, which has a maximum of three stories and it's for sprinkler buildings. Right away, we know this is no good, right? Our building has no sprinklers and this one here is for sprinkler buildings. Nope, no good. So we scratch this one out and keep on moving backwards. The next one is Article 3.2.259, which is titled Maximum Three Stories. Could that work? Maybe. So then we read the whole content of this article. So we move on to the first clause, Clause 3.2.259.1a. You read that clause and you notice that yes, this clause applies. So then we move on to the next clause, which is 3.2.259.1b. You read its content and it sends you to the contents of this table, 3.2.259, right? Which is a table that has number of stories, how many streets this building is facing, area, and so on. So does our building at two stories facing two streets and at 850 square meters fit within the requirements? Is it allowed to be? Yes, it is. So what does that mean? It means that this article is applicable. The article that is applicable is 3.2.259. So now we get to answer this example. And how do we do it? We do it by answering what was asked of us. So we start with first with the construction requirements. So let's start with the building shall conform with sentence 3.2.259 2, which means that the building shall be of either combustible or non-combustible material, according to this sentence. Okay. And then we have to figure out the floor rating and the mezzanine rating for fire resistance ratings. So the floor assembly fire resistance rating is 45 minutes, according to clause 3.2.259 2a, right? Because I read the whole content of this article. Where is the non-combustible mezzanine? Well, it's just the next clause. Non-combustible mezzanine, the fire resistance rating for it is 45 minutes. You find that? under clause 3.2.259.2b. That's it. Now, you're able to, after having gone over this example, to practice this topic by doing homework set number two, specifically question number one. And this is important because I want to repeat again that practice, practice, practice is very important for this topic and really any topic related to the Ontario Building Code because as a topic it's so new we need to be comfortable and practice it
Okay. That's it. We're done. I want to thank you so much for your time. You could have been anywhere else, but you follow this video. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.